Well, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and give him freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Where did we leave off last week? Judges 18.31. So we leave off Judges 19 now. We leave off Judges 18.31? Yeah, we read all of 18. So now we're on Judges 19. All right. So we read about uh, the apostasy of the Hebrew children in the days that there were no kings. Micah and uh, him ordaining his own priest. Mm -hmm. uh, the children of Dan, they came and uh, made their own um, inheritance oh, yeah. in the city mm -hmm. and literally didn't go by the ordinances until the day of captivity. So where we at now? 19? Mm -hmm. Alright, well, let's pick up 19. It's Judges chapter 19. Let's see what we're working with. What's the last chapter in Judges? 21? No. 20? I don't know. Good question. I feel like it's either 19 might be the last one. I feel like it's more than that. No, I can't believe that. It ain't more than 21. 23 at the most. 21? Yeah, that thing's short. Or shorter. It ain't all that short. But. I don't know why I thought it was longer. Ah, so, 20. 20 is the last one? Uh, no, no, it's 21. But I always cringe when I read 20 and 21. All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and do it. It's messed up. It's Judges, chapter... Uh, 19 verse 1. Let's read through it. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel. There was what? No king in Israel. Oh, so I guess what the people were doing, whatever they felt like doing. Let's see. That there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. Mm. And his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. Okay. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again, having his servant with him and a couple of donkeys. And she brought him into her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. Mm -hmm. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him, and he abode with him three days. So they did eat and drink and lodge there. And it came to pass on the fourth day when they arose early in the morning that he rose up to depart. And the damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, Comfort your heart with a morsel of bread, and afterward go your way. And they sat down and did eat and drink, both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let your heart be merry. All right, so Pop said, Go ahead and stay the night. Right? Be happy about it, you know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and stay the night. Let's see what happened next. And when the man arose up to depart, the father-in-law urged him, therefore he lodged there again. And he arose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart, and the damsel's father said, Comfort thy heart, I pray thee. And they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat, both of them. Mm -hmm. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine and his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father, said unto him, Behold now, the day draws towards evening. I pray you tarry all night. Behold, the day grows to an end. Lodge here, that your heart may be merry. And tomorrow, get you early on your way that you may go home. All right. So now, you know what I'm saying? You see, he, you know what I'm saying, got the mind to leave. But, you know, time keep passing, lollygagging. All right, go ahead and stay another night. All right, let's see what happened. But the man would not tarry that night. But he rose up and departed and came over against Jebus, which is in Jerusalem. And there were with him two donkeys saddled. His concubine also was with him. And when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn into this city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside here into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah. All right, so he said, We're not staying with you, Gentile. That don't make no darn sense. We're going to go ahead and keep going. All right, let's see. 
And he said unto his servant, Come and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed on and went their way, and the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belongs to Benjamin. And they turned aside there to go in and lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he sat him down in the street of a city. For there was no man that took them into his house to lodge him. Mm -hmm. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which was also of Mount Ephraim, and sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Where are you, where are you going? And where, do you, where are you coming from? And he said unto him, we are, we are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim. From there am I. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord. And there is no man that receives me to house. Mm -hmm. Yet there is both straw and provender for our donkeys, and there is bread and wine also for me and for, my, and for, my, and for your handmaid. And for the young men which is with your servants, there is no want of anything. Mm -hmm. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. However, let all your wants, let all your wants lie upon me. Only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the donkeys, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Mm -hmm. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about, and beat at the door, and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Know my brothers, nay, I pray you, do not do so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to my house. Do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them will I bring out now, mm -hmm. and humble ye them, and do with them what seems good unto you. But unto this man do not so a vile thing. All right, hold we got there. Go to, uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 19. I think that's what I want. Genesis chapter 19. Daniel, if you get there first, let me know what Genesis 19 wants say. And they came two angels to start up. Oh, yeah. That's what I want. So Genesis chapter 19, 1. We ain't, we ain't got to read it yet. I'm going to wait until T get there. It's Genesis chapter 19. Give me verse 1. Man, we're going city to city, right? Mm -hmm. First, you know what I'm saying, man, let him in. He's like, go ahead and stay the night, father-in-law. Then he kept on moving on, and nobody would take him in. So he went from this city to that city to that city, nobody would take him in. All of a sudden, he reached the city, you know what I'm saying? He was like, no, nah, we're not going to lodge here, you know, he's Gentile. So he go to his brothers, the next darn city. You know what I'm saying? They take him in. Then all of a sudden, some men of Belial. What men of Belial mean? Like worthless men. Worthless men, right? Men of worth in the came and they say, you know what? Go ahead and let that man out so we can know him. What that mean when you say get to know him? Uh, they wanted to sexually abuse him. Yeah. Let's look at this. Is, uh, Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So who is that? Uh, Lot. Okay. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. And tarry all night and wash your feet, and ye, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. That sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Okay. And they said, No, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto them, unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake and unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, could pass the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And what did they say? And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into the this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Mm -hmm. He said, Bring them out so we may what? Know them. Sound familiar, don't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Keep going. And Lot, went out, uh, and Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, Bring them out unto you. And what about that part? That part sound familiar? Yeah. Let's go back. This is Judges chapter 19. Where do we leave off? 24. 24. Give me Judges chapter 19, verse 20. I want to make sure we're seeing the same thing here. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. 
Howsoever, let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the donkeys, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Now, as they Hold were, on, go back a little bit more. Go to verse uh, 16. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of, out of the field at even, which was also on Mount Ephraim, and he surged in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wafering man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Where are you going? And where are you coming from? Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim. Mm -hmm. From there I am from. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but I am now going to the house of the Lord. And there is no man that receives me to house. So the man is going to the house of the Lord. He said, Ain't nobody going to receive me, though. Let's see what else happened. Yet there is both straw and provender for our donkeys, and there is bread and wine also for me, and for your handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants, there is no one of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee, howsoever, let all thy wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into, the, into his house, and gave provender unto his donkeys, and they washed their feet, and did eat and drink. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city Certain sons of Belial beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house. The old man saying, Bring forth the men that came into thine house that we may know them. Mm -hmm. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, mm -hmm. seeing that this man is come into my house, do not this folly. Mm -hmm. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now. All right, and so it's the same thing, them. right? They came, they wanted to know the people of Bilal, they wanted to know, you know what I'm saying, wanted to know the, the folks, you know what I'm saying, the person in there get, came to the point where to protect these men, I'll give you my daughter, right? I'll give you my daughter in order to protect these men. The first day, we were dealing with angels. This time, we're dealing with a Levite, right? The Levite, you know what I'm saying, he's he trying to make it on the Judah. Well, no, that's not true. He's trying to make it on the Shiloh. He's trying to make it to the house of the Lord where the tabernacle was, which is Shiloh. He coming from Judah, Right? From Bethlehem. Keep going. See if it start coming together. But unto this man do not sow a vile thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So the men took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when they and when the day began to spring, they let her go. So who 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 who's doing this? Uh, the men of Benjamin. Men of Benjamin. Keep that in mind. Right? Men of Benjamin did this to the men. Right? Oh, we gotta look, go back to 19. I think I'm gonna try to make some we're gonna try to make some sense of it eventually. You know what I'm saying? We just wanna keep that in mind though. Men of, men of Benjamin did this. It's part of our history. You know what separate our book from the rest of these people's books? When we talk about our history, we talk about the good, bad, and the ugly. Right? You just Look, let the let the rest of these people write their book, and then they talk about their history. Oh, they were the greatest people all the time. Not us. You talk about our history. You look at the average thing in our book. It's gonna be negative against us. It's gonna be talking about how we, you know, what I'm saying we ain't do what we're supposed to do. We sinners. We, we unrighteous. We ain't never listen to God. All that. You look at their book. Oh, they've been perfect the whole time. Right? You got God in one place saying, "Oh, I chose y'all above all people." Then another place saying. Oh, yeah, I disowned y'all, but I'm about to get rid of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Real quick. You know, on one hand, oh, I'm going to take you to the land of milk and honey. On the other hand, Moses, move out of the way so I can kill all of them. Mm -hmm. Our book going to show you the whole thing. It's honest. It's transparent. Right? Well, the rest of these people still, they just, I mean, I mean, suddenly, I mean, these people just all of a sudden just the greatest people ever. You read their stuff. Yeah, we ain't got time for it. Let's talk about the ugly. All right? It's Genesis chapter 19. Where we leave off? Eight, this is Genesis, Genesis chapter 19, verse 8. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as, as is good in your eyes. Uh huh. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. Mm -hmm. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. All right? So now the people, the people of this is Sodom and Gomorrah. All right? So the people of Sodom looking at Lot like, wait a minute, you just, a, they called him a soldier. You came here to soldier. They like, oh, well, you just a visitor here. And all of a sudden you make yourself a judge where you can call shots? Okay. You get your butt back. Or we'll deal with your butt worse than we'll do with them. 
Let's hear about it. Let's see. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house, and pulled Lot into the house to them, and shut the door. Mm -hmm. And they smote the men that were at the door of with the what? house with blindness. Mm. They did what? Smote the men at the house of the door with blindness. And what couldn't they do after that? Both small and great, so they that so that they wearied themselves to find the door. They couldn't find the what? The door. Oh, let's talk about it. This is uh this is Romans chapter one. This is Romans chapter one. Romans chapter one. I don't know what verse I want. I probably want like verse maybe uh what's the last what's the last verse uh number? Thirty-two. All right. So, uh, give me like verse nineteen. This is Romans chapter one, verse nineteen. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. Mm -hmm. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Mm -hmm. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Mm -hmm. Their foolish heart was what? Darkened. Uh oh. I mean, that's almost like, you know what I'm saying? That's like being struck with blindness and you can't find the door, huh? All right, so he said their foolish heart was darkened. I wonder why. Let's hear about it. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools uh -huh. and changed the glory of the uncomfortable God into an image made like unto corruptible man, uh -huh. unto birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Mm -hmm. That's why God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Mm, I wonder what they're doing. Let's hear about it. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Okay. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Uh all right. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Oh. For even their women did char change the natural use into that which is against nature. Okay. And likewise, also, the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another. Oh, men, so men was that the Men wonder what? Know each other? Men with men. Mm. Working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Okay. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind mm -hmm. to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, mm -hmm. inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, mm -hmm. implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Mm -hmm. Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whosoever you are that judges. For when you judge another, you condemn yourself, for you that judge does the same things. Alright, so he laid it out for him. He said he darkened their heart. And these people that was, you know, he gave them up to like the lust of each other. You know what I'm saying? They had mess around, man on men. He's like, oh man, that's why. I'll tell you that gangsta. That's the. I mean, that. I mean, you look at the book. Book said that thing come from a dark heart. Right? He said, okay, well I'll darken your heart then. Well, I just like the men. They came. He said, let me know them. Right? Angel said, okay, that's all right. That's enough. Step back. Come on, lie. Come back in here. Close the door. Step back. Struck him with blindness, and they couldn't find the door. John 10. I don't know what this could be talking about. This is John chapter 10. Verse 9. Uh, give me John chapter 10. Give me verse 1. I want verse 9? Yeah, that's what he said. I'm the door. Now go ahead and give me verse 1 then. Right. Verily I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. I mean, you, the whole point is to get to the door. Because if you try to go some other way, you're going to be a thief and a robber. Let's hear about it. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Uh-huh. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name. Mm -hmm. And leads them out. Mm -hmm. And when he puts forth his own sheep... 
he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Mm -hmm. And the strangers they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Mm -hmm. This parable spake Yahushua unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Mm -hmm. Then Yahushua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I got that. So when he darkened their eyes, this is most high God letting us know, oh, you ain't going to find that door. That door is done there. Right? That thing ain't done there. You ain't got, you ain't got no, you ain't got nothing to even look for at this point. Because he darkened our hearts. Right? Then give us up to our own things. Our own sins. He said, okay, I'll give you up to that reprobate mind. Right? So now let's go back to Judges 19. Let's pick up where we left off. We see the parallels there. We see the angel stepped in. Right? Saved Lot and his daughters. Right? Lot had two daughters. Saved him. But you remember, the man that was visiting, he came in Judges 19 with a concubine. Right? So he was traveling with him and it was with his concubine. Right? With his woman. Okay, so he's going as a Levite, trying to make it to the house of the Most High God. He with his concubine. He passed through these lands. First, he lived with his father-in-law. Everything good. Passed through a few lands to get to the Gentiles. He's like, no, nah, I'm not staying here with these Gentiles. Let me go to our people. Lands in the Benjamites. One of the Benjamites like, yeah, come on in. Stay with me for the night. The other Benjamites came out. He's our people now. The other Benjamites came out. They said... Uh, who was that man that was traveling through here? Right? Man was like, listen, man, I got a daughter. You take my daughter. Alright? Let's pick up from there. Let's see. What verse is that? 24. 24. So it's Judges chapter 19, or verse 24. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Then will I bring out now, and humble ye them. And so how many women is that? Two. That's just like Lot, huh? Remember, Lot had how many daughters? Okay. See if we can make this make sense. Keep going. And do with them what seems good unto you, but unto this man do not so a vile thing. Mm -hmm. But the men would not hearken to him, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning, and when the day began to spring, they let her go. How many How many did they uh, abuse? One. Two women was offered to them. They only got the man's, uh, the man's one. All right? And they abused her. And then what happened? And they let her go. They let her go? Okay, let's hear about what happened after that. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. Mm -hmm. And her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was falling down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, Up, and let us get going. But none answered. Then the man took her up on a donkey and the man rose up and got him unto his place. And when he had, and when he was coming to his house, he took a knife and laid hold of his concubine and divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces and sent her into the coast of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said, There was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. Alright, so what just happened? And she died. Took her home, split her up, divided into the land of Israel. I was like, look, this is what these Benjamites did to my woman. They raped her. All right? They had her to themselves. All right? Abuse her. And after that, she crawled her way all the way back to the door, trying to get into the door and died. Like this on the door. He opened up and he said, up. All right? You know what I'm saying? Get up. He realized she dead, lifts her up. So he chops her into pieces. And sends a piece of earth to all the different tribes in Israel as a witness, right? I want everybody to see what happened. You know what I'm saying? This is in our land. This is what happened. He a Levite. You know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta imagine it. You know what I'm saying? He like the politician. Or something. Yeah, he know, he know a little bit about the word. So he looked at it like, no, no. I want everybody to see this. Everybody, give your opinion. What you think of this? Let me tell you what happened. Everybody, see this. I want you to feel it and see it. It's my woman. Y'all just tell me how y'all feel. Everybody, just give your opinion. Let's hear about it. Then all the children of Israel went out. What chapter is it? 20. This chapter 20. This is uh, Judges chapter 20, verse 1. Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man. Uh -huh. From Dan, they've been a Beersheba with the land of Gilead unto the, unto the Lord and Mizpeh. 
and the chief of all the people, even the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God, 400,000 footmen that drew the sword. Mm -hmm. Now the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were gone up to Mizpah. Then said the children of Israel, tell us, how was this wickedness? Okay. And the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came to Gibeah that belongs to a Benjamin, to Benjamin. I and my concubine the lodge, and the men of Gibeah arose against me and beset the house round about upon me by night, and thought to have slain me and my concubine, have they forced, and she is dead. And I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel, mm -hmm. for they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. That's right. Behold, ye are children of Israel. Give here your advice and counsel. Mm -hmm. And the people arose as one man, saying, we will not any of us go to his tent, neither will we any of us turn into his house. Mm -hmm. But now this shall be the thing which we will do to Gibeah. We will go up by lot against it. And we will take ten men of a hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel, and a hundred of a thousand, and a thousand out of ten thousand, to fetch victual for the people that they may do when they come to Gibeah of Benjamin, according to all the folly that they have wrought in Israel. Mm -hmm. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. And the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness, what wickedness is that? Is this that is done among you? Now therefore deliver us the men of the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away the evil from Israel. All right, so they went to Benjamin and they said, Okay, who did it? You know what I'm saying? Y'all let this wickedness happen around y'all? No, who did it? You know, let's put them to death. Let's see what Benjamin said. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brother and the children of Israel. They protected them. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the children of Benjamin were numbered mm -hmm. at that time out of the cities 26,000 men that drew the sword beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered 700 chosen men. In other words... Benjamin had some boys. You know what I'm saying? Benjamin wasn't out there Benjamin just playing. Was like, bro, Benjamin was out there. They, they had 26. K of them boy. They like, okay. What y'all want to do? Oh, yeah, we know all y'all got together. Y'all ain't about to walk in here and just take our people. What y'all want to do? You know what I'm saying? So, Benjamin, you could tell, Benjamin was a little rowdy. Like, we ain't snitching on the homie. Exactly. Let's see what happened now. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the city's 20 and 6,000 men that drew the sword besides the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered 700 chosen men. Mm hmm. Among all the among all this people, there were seven hundred chosen men left left handed. Every one could sling stones at a hair breadth and not miss. And the men of Israel, beside Benjamin, were numbered four hundred thousand men that drew the sword, and these were men of war. All right. So Benjamin bad. people, only twenty six k. Them boys was bad, and they were left handed. You know what I'm saying? Left handed. They had sling that thing, hit you right in the middle of the forehead with that thing. You know what I'm saying? Them bad boy, <laughs> not miss. But it was 400,000 of the people of Israel. Israel. Oh, these, these boys wasn't too shabby either. You know what I'm saying? Let's see how this thing go down. And the children of Israel rose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped at Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin, and the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed, and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day twenty and two thousand men. And the people of the men of Israel encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array at the place where they put themselves in array the first day. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until even and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, go up against them. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel. Again, 18,000 men. All these drew the sword. Right. So you look at it. Benjamin tearing them boys up. First two days. Right. Tearing their butts up. Let's go see what happened now. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept. And sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the ark of the covenant of God was in there, it was there in those days. Mm -hmm. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, 
Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease? It has got to be old by this time. And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. And Israel set liars in wait round about Gibeah. And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day and put themselves in array against Gibeah as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city. And they began to smite the people and kill as at other times in the highways of which one goes up to the house of God mm -hmm. and the other to Gibeah in the field about 30 men of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the children of Benjamin, Benjamin said, they are spitting down before us as the first. But the children of Israel said, let That's us here. flee and draw them from the city into the highways. And all the men of Israel rose up out of their place and put themselves in array at Baal Tamar. Mm -hmm. And the liars and weight of Israel came forth out of their places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. And there came against Gibeah 10,000 chosen men out of all of Israel. Mm -hmm. And the battle was sore, but they knew not that evil was near them. Mm -hmm. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel. And the children of Israel destroyed of the Benjamites that day 25,000 and 100. So how men. many did they start with? 26. And how many did they kill? 26,000 plus 700. And they killed 25,000 and 100 men. 25,000. Took All they, these drew the sword. Took that population right on down. All right? They thought they had it for a minute. They had them slingshots. You know, we've been wearing Smash Brothers. Now we're standing back, you know what I'm saying, just hitting them. You think, you think you're good. You know what I'm saying? You're all right. Then, you know what I'm saying, after a while, everybody started catching on. Then now you got to see, you got to fight head up. Once you got to fight head up, oh, that thing done. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, that thing done. Children of Israel came in there and they chopped them all down. Left them with less than a thousand, you know, about a thousand people left. They whole population. So now Benjamin in a rough spot, right? But this is the judgment of the Most High God. You had a Levite, you know what I'm saying, traveling, going to a different land. You know what I'm saying? He trying to he trying to go to the house of God. On his way, go trying to go to the house of God. He get invited to you know get invited to somebody nobody else wanted to invite. Him, right? Nobody else to the different place he wanted to go wanted to invite him. But he ends up going to the Benjamin, Benjamin, the, to the Benjamites. All right, one of them invite him in. After that, the rest of them came in and tried to get him. All right? Bring him out. We want to know him. Instead, his woman was given up. She ended up being raped and forced and then divided to all the land. Handed off to all the different land. That caused an uproar. Right? All 12 tribes. All 12 tribes. Handed off to all the different ones. She split up and divided towards the 12 tribes. Right? When y'all sure was slaughtered, right, and he died, that blood goes on to all the 12 tribes. That was supposed to cause a reaction in us. That was supposed to put us in a position where we say, you know what, let's all come together and let's figure out who did this. All right? But that didn't happen. All right? That war didn't happen. So now that's the judgment at the end. Right? At the very end, that, that judgment still has to happen. You're going to have all of the Most High God and his army coming directly to the people who still rebel. All you got to do is give up who did it. Right? In other words, all you got to do is bow down to the king. Folks ain't going to do that. You know what they're going to do? They're going to strap up for war. Right? When they strap up for war, they're going to think they own something. All right? They're going to they gonna be chasing after us, thinking they're doing something. And after that, the Most High God going to come down and lay these people out. And he's going to reduce the population. What the book say? Uh, tenth. Where it say that at? I don't remember. I think it was Isaiah. So this is Isaiah chapter, uh, I think it's one, actually. One said one. It might so be two. The whole book of Judges is basically how it plays out in the end, right? You got Judges. You come to the land of Egypt. We don't have a king. Joshua dies. We don't have a ruler, right? The Messiah died. We don't have a ruler. There's nobody to lead us. There's nobody in the physical to lead us into the righteous way. So everybody's just doing what they want to do, right? So God said judges to get us out of oppression at certain times, right? They will come and vindicate for the people. But the last judge that's going to come is the Messiah, and he's going to vindicate for the people. So he's going to take his righteous ones and kill everybody that fought against him and everybody that oppressed him. Just like in Judges, how Samson came, he would kill the Philistines, liberate us for a little bit and Jephthah he would kill whoever was oppressing us and liberate us for a little bit but when the last judge come 
is that's it. Ain't nobody gonna oppress us no more. That he's gonna lay down everybody that put his chosen under oppression. Hebrews and Gentiles. So, what'd you say you wanted? Uh, Isaiah one. I think this is a long shot because it might be Isaiah two. Could be Isaiah three. It's somewhere in the beginning though. I just don't remember exactly where. If anybody get there, scan through it for me. Isaiah one. I want to say it's one. It could be. Could be two though. They reduced their population from 26 to 1,000. All right, that's, that got that. It was that like, man, we can't just kill off the whole tribe of Benjamin. It was like, we got to get them wives so they can free Oh, yeah, the next chapter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it. We're probably going to read it, but we'll talk about that one real quick. Scan through, look for it at the 10th. It should be at the end, right? If it's in there. You say, we say, man? I say, uh... Isaiah 1. If it ain't in there, scan through the end of chapter 2. What did it say? Isaiah chapter 26? No, I'm just going to add Isaiah chapter 1 verse 2. What is that? Said, and I will restore thy judges as at first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. After thou shalt be called to your righteousness and faithful city. And Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, and her comfort with her righteousness, and the destruction of the transgressors and sinners shall be together. And they shall forsake the Lord, shall the Lord and shall be consumed. If you have to go potty, get up, but that's it. That's what it says. Tent. It says like something like a tent. You don't see it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing at my voice. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is hilarious. Uh, all right. Well, you know what I'm saying. Uh, we have to find. I can't remember exactly where it is, but um, book tell you that he gonna reduce it to the tent. So in the same way, at the most high God get done with these people, he reduce it to a tent. All right, and that's what we see that happen to the Benjamites. All right, whole book got to line up. Whole book testified the Messiah. All right, in the next chapter we don't have to read it, but in the next chapter we read about um, in Judges 21 how the people started to have a soft heart towards Benjamin. All right, some time went by, the Benjamites was reduced so low, and they didn't have any wives, and they actually ended up vowing not to give any of their wives to the Benjamites. So they ended up working out something after a while. They like, listen, man, we got to, you know, so we got to get them some wives. You know what I'm saying? We can't just leave them out here. And, you know, this is our, still our people. Yeah, we punished them, but that that might be too harsh. So they they orchestrated some things. I think they got like 400, they got like 400 women from, uh, I forgot what it was. They got 400, 400 women from one group, one, one of the tribes. And they said, okay, y'all can take wives from them, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, so then they, uh, they took some wives from, uh, I think it was Ephraim. Um, and they worked out a deal with Ephraim, just like, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, why I come out, you know what I'm saying? Some, some, some of the virgins come out dancing. That's cool, you know what I'm saying? And they can take them and everything. They ended up taking them. Uh, and they just kind of worked out some deals on the back end with Ephraim. You get it to Isaiah 6, 13. It was 6, 13. Let's look at this. This is Isaiah chapter 6, verse 13. So I want 13. We're going to do like, gonna do like 10. All right, this is Isaiah chapter 6, verse 10. No, 9. This is Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9. And he said, Go, and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Uh oh what did that remind us of? Who said that? No, sure. When y'all wish you would say that to us? Uh, these people, hard as wax, gross. What did he say that was after he said that? Uh, it's Matthew parable. chapter 13. Let's talk it's about it. Real quick. We, I mean, we're just going to go to Matthew chapter 13. Then we're going to come back to Isaiah chapter 6. And then we're going to try to we're gonna try to put all this thing together. All right? It's important, you know. If people be hearing y'all, she would talk. They'd be like, "Ooh, look, he came up with some good stuff. He came up with it." But you know what I'm saying? When you read it in the book, you didn't read it from him first. Matthew 13, 14. Uh, this is uh Matthew chapter 13, verse. Is it 14 or 10? Uh, 14 is when he says what Isaiah just said. Don't don't don't. What I'm looking for start at 10 though. Yeah, or nine. Yeah, 10. 10. So this is uh Matthew chapter 13, verse 10. 
And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He said, Why, why do you speak to these people in parables? They asked a the question. Who came unto them? The disciples. Verse 1. Give me verse 1. And wait, 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 wait. Before we do that, okay. we go to Isaiah 8 something. We we'll grab that, but let's grab that after. Okay. So let's grab right now verse uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 1. <laughs> right? Let's hear what it say right there. 13 1? Mm hmm. The same day when y'all show out to the house and sat by the seaside, uh -huh. great multitudes were gathered together unto him. I mean, a whole bunch of people were gathered together unto him. And then what? So that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And the multitude was st standing on the shore. They were listening to the man. What happened next? And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. He spoke many things unto them. Who's the them in this sentence? The followers. The multitude. The multitude. That's important that we look at it. Okay, jump on down to verse 10. <laughs> and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Who's the them in this sentence? The multitude. Okay, so the disciples came. There's a separation already. Disciples came separate from the multitude, and they said, Why do you speak to them in parables? Them being the multitude. Let's hear about it. And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the multitude. Okay, so now Yahushua said, Now it's given unto you. Who to you? Disciples. Okay, so he said it's given unto disciples to what? No, the mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom is given to what? The disciples. I got that. He said, but to the to them? But to them it is not given. For whosoever. So now they asked us, why do we call ourselves disciples and not Christians? And they said, let me just say, <laughs> you just show me one one place in the book where it's connected, where it says it's given unto the Christians anything. Danielle, you know, listen, Danielle up there, she trying to teach these women a little something. You know what I'm saying? She be out there, she be trying to show them a little something in the book, exercising her little sword. You know what I'm saying? I be watching that, I be like, oh, look at that. She trying, this lady going back and forth with Danielle talking about, well, no, you a Christian, and this is why, and us Christians do this. Listen, what promise is connected to being a Christian? I understand it, I get it. Zahar, Max. Go answer the door for me. If somebody try to take you, just run. <laughs> All right? So they look at it like, well, no, we Christ. Okay, so you're a Christian. What promise is connected? I talked to I talked to a brother. You know, a brother I told you about when I said I like it. He, he messing with the Hebrews. You know what I'm saying? So I talked to him on the phone. And uh, we had a good little conversation. But I was one of the topics we talked about. I was like, look, bro, I understand what you're saying. Like, you're a Christian and you don't want you don't want people to feel ashamed about being Christian. But I was like, why do you care? Like why? Like what is it? What is it about being a Christian that's like that's what you want to make your boast about? I get if you like, like don't be ashamed if somebody call you a Christian. I get that message, right? That's, that come from our book. Our book say that. So I, was like, I get that message. But it's something different to say, don't be ashamed if it happened to let me boast in this. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you can't find that in the book. He like, no, nah, but when Paul I was like, listen close, Paul didn't say nothing about being a Christian. He said, I don't want these people, he said, I want these people to be as I am. He is pure, not to say Christian. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you gotta be careful, bro. I was like, what promise is connected to it? I was like, you, if you show me a promise, if you show me something in the book where it's like, okay, since I'm a Christian, I do this, then you got something. We got something then. Right? Let's call ourselves Christian tomorrow. But if that's not the case, and all you got is tradition, that's it, then anybody can go in any direction. You can't make it solid. But us, we call ourselves disciples because the books say very clearly the mysteries are given to the disciples. Let's see what's given to the Christians. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse, uh, what, 13? I'm still reading. Yeah, 13. Okay. Therefore I speak to them in parables because they seeing see not and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Uh-oh, where did we get that from? Isaiah. So he quoted Isaiah. He's trying to let you know, I speak to them in parables because they see and see not. Neither do they understand what I'm talking about. Let's hear about it. So that means he did it on purpose. Y'all got to consider what the Most High God do. That means he do it on purpose. Keep going. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. Uh -huh. And seeing ye shall see and not it shall not perceive. Uh huh. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Uh huh. That's at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and mm -hmm. should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. 
For verily, verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Uh huh. Hear ye the parable, parable of the soul. We good. Okay. Now let's go back. This is Isaiah chapter what? Six? Isaiah. We're going to do Isaiah 8, 16. This is 8. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. I yeah, got that. Show me where it says anywhere in the book. Seal up the testimony among my Christians. You won't find it. It sounds, we've been taught that all our life, that we Christians, we Christians, we Christians. You got to be a Christian. You believe in the Bible, you a Christian. That's what we've been taught. So now it's almost synonymous. You're like, oh, no, nah, you know, I only do what the Bible says. But like, oh, well, yeah, okay, that, you're a good Christian then. <laughs> you let the, listen, you let the Christian tell it. They not Christian. I'll tell you the truth. The Christian's not against being a disciple. But what's a disciple for a Christian? I mean, you a super Christian if you're a disciple. You go, I'm trying to tell you, you go to the, Randy, hey, what bring you by? Still alive? What, you get stranded out there or something? <laughs> Goodness gracious, I'll give you a jump after this. You might accidentally get saved. You know what I'm talking about? You know, that's the Lord's doing. You know what I'm saying? Shut your car down right in front of that, like, dang it, let me walk in here. That's all right, I'll give you a jump after the most high God gets to you. Right? But we look at it, you two, you two Christian, listen up, yeah, it's a difference. I'm just a Christian. But, but Deacon Smith? Oh, Deacon Smith is a disciple of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? That's like a rank for them. They be like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a Christian. But I mean, he know the word. That's like a disciple. You know what I'm saying? He out discipling people. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like a special, it's like a special class of Christian for them. Like, boy, if you don't knock this stuff off, it ain't no, if you ain't a disciple, I don't care what you call it. It ain't no matter. Muslim, Christian, this, that. If you're not a disciple, what I care? That's the entry point. That's where you get the mysteries. If you don't have the mysteries of the book, the whole gospel is a mystery. Yeah. So if it wasn't given unto you to know the mysteries, what do you have at the end of the day? You just one of the multitudes. And the book tells you very clearly, many will seek. This is Matthew chapter 7. Then we're coming back to uh, Isaiah chapter 8. Then after that, we're going to Isaiah chapter 6. Now after we get done with all of that, Somehow we got to make our way We're all the way back to Judges chapter 21 and then try to finish this thing off. We might even start Ruth if we feel good tonight. I mean, I mean, let's just do some talking. Right? This is the book. The whole thing got to line up. All right, let's see it. It's Matthew chapter 7. Give me verse 21. I didn't want to see how many. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh huh. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Uh huh. Many will say to me in that How many? Day, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied? In they call day? the man Lord. Many is going to say, a whole bunch of folks, I mean, I don't know, a great multitude of people are going to say to him in that day, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Jesus, have we not prophesied in whose name? In your name. In Belial's name. In uh in uh 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 give me a name. Muhammad. Muhammad's name, here we go. <laughs> Mohammed's. You know what I'm saying? Whose name they prophesying in? They say in the man's name. Let's see how y'all should call him a liar and be like, no, y'all prophesying prophesying my name. Let's see. And in thy name have cast out devils. Uh-huh. And in thy name done many wonderful works. They said they actually did wonderful works. Not like not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I actually did it. Like, we cast out devils in your, like, I've seen the devils leave. This is legit stuff they talking about. These people talking to the man himself. It ain't like they're just sitting there making something up. This stuff really happened. What do you think that's going to do for the most high? What do you think moved the most high God? Let me think. You obeying me? Are you doing miracles in my name? I don't know. Let me think which one. Because, I mean, if I want somebody that can do miracles, I can give somebody that obeys me the power to do miracles. But if I want somebody that obeys me, I don't think it matters if they do miracles. So I don't know what he could be saying. Let's, let's hear how he talk about, you know what I'm saying, depart from me because you don't do the miracles right. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
all it came down to sin at the end of the day. So now you one of these many, many, many people that just walk up. You remember, you're a Christian, so you don't have anything attached to your name. You don't have any promise attached to your name. You don't even have any instruction. You can't find nowhere in the book where it say, keep the word and you can be my Christian. You know what you will say? Right? Anyone who follows this word, then you can be my disciple. It does say that. Like Yahushua specifically out of his own mouth does say that. You'll never see where it say you do this and you can be a Christian. So guess what? I guess Who determines what it is to be a Christian? I mean, if you, these people, Daniel, on Daniel's little thing that she be on, these people sitting here arguing about, no, but to be a Christian, you have to be this. No, 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 a real Christian is this. Prove it. Anybody can be a darn Christian. Pop up and be a darn Christian. Why do you got so many denominations? Who gonna tell a Christian you can't be a Christian? You can't prove it. Who's ever came up with a guideline like, yo, this is what a Christian is, and it being a, a, like in authority? It ain't in the book, so how are you going to tell me? I'll be whatever I want to be as a Christian. That's why you see these Christians do whatever they want to do. Some of them gay. Some of them not gay. Some of them keep the Sabbath. Some of them don't keep the Sabbath. Right? They do whatever they want because there's nothing tied to it. Disciple, that thing got to line up. That thing got to be... Because the, the mystery is given to us. Right? This is uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse uh, 17. Is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 17. Books say, seal up the testimony amongst my disciples. 16. 16, we're going to read it again. It's, uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Mm -hmm. And I will wait upon the Lord that hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Mm -hmm. So the most I got is hiding his face. He said, seal it up. The only people that going to have it is who? The disciples. Okay, and then after that, I'm going to lie, and I'm going to wait, and I'm going to look for the Lord who's doing what? Hiding his face. So now everybody's looking for God, right? But we can't find him. It's like that door. We're looking for him. We can't find him. The only people that got the truth for us is who? The disciples. All right. Book trying to tell us something. Let's see. Behold, I the we, have, we might have to start starting off with this thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we ever started off with this before. Oh, yeah. That thing sounds too good right now. Let's go to it. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are the signs are for signs and for wonders in Israel mm -hmm. from the Lord of hosts. Who is this talking right Zion. now? I and the children that the Lord has given me. I don't know who that could be talking. Yeah, I mean, because we disciples of who? Yeah, so when y'all sure get to talk, he's like, listen, seal it up. Put it with the disciples. Right? After that, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to sit here and wait. Because God hiding from y'all. But guess who we got? The disciples. You know what? Me and the children that the most high God gave to me. Oh, we'll hook y'all. Don't worry about it. Right? Keep going. Watch this. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? Right. The living to the dead. That's not what's happening right now. That's not what's happening right now. All of us, I'm sure have some type of friend that got them little rocks. You know what I'm saying? Be wearing them little rocks, you know what I'm saying? Got the little dream catchers, you know what I'm saying? Oh, just talking about this. Look, they be burning the darn sage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They be like, she be burning the sage? Ah, light her butt up. Don't let me find out about it. You know what I'm saying? Be burning the darn sage. What do you think all that stuff is? All that stuff is familiar spirits. Some of them be actually going, getting their palms darn red. You know what I'm saying? Trying to talk to like they dead folks. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? The people that love. I got people be doing that every day. I tell you right now, every one of us got a friend. That's crazy. Right? I can guarantee it. And the Hebrews. Every one of us. That thing got that. He said, seek unto a familiar spirit, right? What up? He asked a question, though. And that mutter and peep. Should not a people seek unto their God? He said, don't it make sense? You're an Israelite. Don't it make sense for you to seek your God? He's like, that don't even make sense. He's like, should not a people seek unto your God? So by implication, if you are seeking familiar spirits, what's become your God? The familiar spirit. Okay, keep burning your sage. For the living to the dead. Mm -hmm. To the law and to the testimony. To what? To the law and to the testimony. To what? The law and to the testimony. And the law and the testimony is sealed up with who? The disciples. Okay. So to the what? The law and the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, 
It is because there is no light in them. I'm not listening to a word of these people saying. Right? I'm not listening to it. I was on back to Danielle page. You know what I'm saying? I was back, you know what I'm saying? I was on ain't her page. You know what I'm saying? But I was back on that like group Danielle, you know what I'm saying? Drag me into. And then, you know what I'm saying? There's one guy on there, we were talking about the Sabbath. And so, no, I don't, know, I don't know what we were talking about. We were like, talking about the Sabbath. They got another one they're talking about, you know what I'm saying? Jesus. You know what I'm saying? They posted just a little picture like this is what Jesus would have looked like. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like a dirty Mexican or something. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what in the world is wrong with these folks? You know what I'm saying? But it was like one of them conversations. At the end of the day, you got a man on there just like, listen, I developed my own religion. He said, I've studied all the religions and I've developed my own religion based off of the truth of all the religions is pretty much what he is implying. I said, so I started laughing. He was like, not once have I laughed at you. <laughs> I was like, because I ain't saying nothing funny. I was like, but you, my friend, that thing was funny. He's like, I just don't see. He's like, when a person writes LOL, that means they're laughing a lot. I was like, you got it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you darn got it. I was like, let me explain it to you. I was like, at, at, at the end of the day, what you trying to tell me is you are the deciding factor of what is truth or not. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm going to say that's funny. And I don't think it's just funny to me. I think God laughing at your butt too. Because the arrogance that you have. To think that you the man, you know what I'm saying, that can look at all the information and say, you know what? Let me take a little bit from here and a little bit from there. And a little bit from there and put it all together. And you know what? This is the right religion. Boy, if you don't knock it off. Right? How arrogant can you be? I told you, the only way that thing worked for me is if it lined up with the book. Whether I like it or not, that thing got to line up with the book. That's the authority source. Most High God who put it together is the authority source. Yeah. Right? There's no other way to look at it. It has to go to the law and to the testimony. If what you're saying, I can't take that thing to the law and to the testimony. What's the testimony? Yeah. All of the book. Right? The law, first five books. Mm -hmm. Testimony is everything else that came after, that came from the Most High God. Right? It's testimony, right? It's people telling you about God. Yep. Right? So if that thing can't line up with the full council, if I look at that thing and I'm like, oh, well, not work here, but it don't work here. Guess what? Oh, I can't listen to you. It ain't no light in you. Right? It don't make sense. It's no light. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, no, we good actually there. Where we say we were going after that? Isaiah 6. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 6. We still got to get to what, 10? Nine? Mm. What was it? Eleven? No, six, thirteen. Oh, thirteen? No, nah, but didn't we start before that? Where we leave oh, off? Wait, 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 sorry. Uh, nine. Isaiah six, nine. Okay, this is uh, Isaiah chapter six, verse nine. Hear me. What? Oh, goodness gracious. You know what I'm saying? You know the shotgun right in front of my brother over there. You might want to be careful. I was like, look at that. How you doing, man? Good seeing you. How you doing, man? Good seeing you. Damn, you don't even let us know anything. You know what I'm saying? I thought I heard something down there. I was like, what butter tripping for? <laughs> butter ain't worth nothing. He ain't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Butter down there. He down there crying. He's just trying to get out so he can lick somebody. Good gracious. I got to get rid of him. Hush, boy. Let's see what happened. This is, uh, this is Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9. Let's see what the book says. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Uh -huh. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, mm -hmm. lest they see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. Do y'all understand what's happening right now? You got a disciple, or you got a Christian, right? And let's just be fair. You got a disciple or you got something that's not a disciple. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be fair. That get Christian, Muslim. That get all of them. I don't want to single out no Christians. They might get offended. You know what I'm talking about? So you got disciples and you got non-disciples. Why would I put myself in any other group? The man just said, for the reason that I don't want. Read it again, bro. Because I don't want to. I don't want nobody to think I'm making it up. Let's see what God's intentions are. Just as you read, just think about. Hmm, what is God trying to make happen right now? Let's see. Make the heart of this people fat and make their eyes heavy mm -hmm. and shut their eyes mm -hmm. lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears. If I don't shut their eyes, they might mess around and see. We would think God's goal is for everybody to see clearly, right? That's not what we just read. What we just read is make their heart fat. Right? 
Close their eyes. Otherwise, they'll mess around and see something. He wants them not to see. And what group did Yahushua tell, her, tell us that applied to? Multitude. The multitude. Is this a multitude that's out there trying to kill people? You know what I'm saying? Trying to, trying to, trying to, uh, like we were talking about, to have relations with the same sex and all that stuff. Is that the, is that the group that we talking about? No, the multitude we talked about with Yahushua, they was following him. They was looking to hear the word. And Yahushua said, oh, no, this is the testimony of, uh, of Isaiah. You know, you remember when Isaiah was like, you know what I'm saying, seeing, but they won't perceive. And hearing, but they won't understand. We have to make sure we understand exactly what the implication was. When we read Isaiah, where he quoted from, he said, I'm doing this for the purpose that they won't see. Yahushua told us that is a fulfillment of the multitude. Not the multitudes that's out there doing whatever they want to do. The multitude that's actually following him. That's looking to hear word from him. Then the disciples asked about it. He told the disciples, oh, no, y'all are different. I can explain it to y'all. He sat there. We read that whole chapter. He explained every single parable to them in full detail. I explained it to him. If we go to Mark 4, it'll tell you he expounded. What expounded me? He thoroughly explained these things to disciples. They asked, why, why the multitude don't get that? Oh, because it's not given to them to know the mysteries. Why would I want to put myself in any other group but a disciple? It's something connected to a disciple. All right, let's see. This is Isaiah chapter 6. Somehow we're going to have to get our way all the way back because eventually we got to get to Judges chapter, 9, uh, chapter uh, 21. All right, keep going. Make the heart of this people fat and make their, eye, make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Mm -hmm. Then said I, Lord... How long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, okay. and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. Okay. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Mm -hmm. But yet in it shall be a tent, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them. And when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So he took our people down from however many we had down to just a tenth of what we had. All right? Same thing that he did to the Benjamites. All right? When we read it in Judges 19, they came out. You know what I'm saying? They treated our people wrong. All the people came against them. In this situation, who was the judge? Uh, All of Israel came together and became the judge. All right? In the end, the judges will be us. That's why Paul said, don't you know you will be the judges of the earth? All of Israel will come and judge. Right? The whole book testified the Messiah. That's why when the judges came to knock everything off to get people out of oppression, that's what Yahshua was going to do. He come in, he's going to kill a whole lot of people and like get, get his disciples out of, the, out of oppression. The last judge. I got that. Mm. All right? Don't let these people tell, tell you, you know what I'm saying? The last prophet talking about some <laughs> Mohammed. You know what I'm talking about? That thing crazy, bro. That thing crazy. That thing disrespectful, too. I be having to, you know what I'm saying? I be wanting to strike their butts when they get to talk. You shut up, boy. Don't you ever say nothing stupid like that to me again. Yeah, they show a lot of pictures of Jesus with the flowy hair and the hands out, you know, glowing like everybody. I love everybody. Let's all get along. But in reality, when he come back, it's going to be a lot of people dying. Oh, no, yeah, they, they got them wrong each time. You know what I'm saying? Our people got them wrong when he first came. Yeah. They're looking for, they looking for to be, you know, Take your butt back in now, the way around. Oh, he came this way now. Okay, that's where he's going to be. Okay. Yeah, that thing, that thing, yeah, that thing messed us up. Because the first time he came around, we were looking for the man. You know what I'm saying? We were looking for somebody to come out here and light some stuff up. Go ahead and get these Romans. You know what I'm saying? Romans had us in no prayer. Go ahead and get these Romans. You know what I'm saying? We ain't used to serving nobody. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and get the Roman. He came. He like, you know what I'm saying? Look, look, what Caesar's is Caesar's. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? We looking at him like, man, this ain't the one. You know what I'm saying? This can't be him. You know what I'm saying? You talking about the salt homie? You know, Joseph and Mary boy? Nah, we good. You know what I'm saying? So we wasn't messing with him. Because we reading our book and we like, nah, when he come back, he's supposed to tear some stuff up. Why we reading the same thing? Like, it's supposed to be a tent. You know what I'm saying? He's supposed to light some stuff up. What's happening? You know what I'm saying? But we missed some of the prophecy. You know what I'm saying? He came back and tricked us. Now these, these Christians, they didn't even, they ain't even taught, they ain't nobody taught these people nothing. So they don't know what they looking for. They got, oh, Jesus, he's gonna come back. 
And you're going to be able to see through his hand. You can be pierced. He's pierced. Right? You're going to be looking. They looking. Somebody come down gently and holding their hand out on the cloud. You know They look. Here, come come climb up with me. They think they're about to get raptured. They think they're just about to be disappearing. Their clothes just going to fall on the ground empty. They're going to leave some shoes behind. That's their mind, though. This is what they've been taught. That's true, though. What a, I thought that thing too. I ain't about the front on these people. I thought that thing. I was like, man, I can't wait. I was just, man, one day you gonna look up. All the rest of these folk gonna be left darn behind. That was my imagination. Yeah. My imagination had all the rest of these, these sinners. I'm just a sinner, just a sinner to, as much as they. But in my mind, listen, they gonna be left behind. What? Jesus gonna call me up and I'm gonna be with him in the sky. What? Like, where you read that at? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Nah. What book is that in? <laughs> that thing is crazy, but that's what we we're taught. They teach us rapture. They teach us all the. They teach us one another thing that, that you know what I'm saying. Danielle group, you know what I'm saying. They arguing about. They argue about all the regular stuff in there. I'm like, listen, I can't even entertain all. It's like I'm so far. I'm so far past. So far past these easy arguments. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I ain't even got time to entertain these arguments. They arguing about when you die, you go straight to heaven. Wow. It's like where you read that? That's at? easy, right? Where did you read that? You can't find that in the book. You can't find anywhere. Book tell you very clearly, you know what I'm saying? The disciples tell you very clearly, David, who is dead, and we can go visit his sepulcher today, has not risen to heaven. <coughs> you getting there before David in your mind? You trying to tell me you getting to heaven before the most high God let David up there. Yahushua said out of his own mouth, no one has risen to heaven except the son of man that's from there. So how you get there? How many people you got to call a liar to get there? You going to make yourself get to heaven. I get it. How many people you got to make a liar, including God? I have people that stop, got mad at me and stopped being my friend because I just told them, like, hey. That thing ain't tough. Especially when you attach yourself to, like, the comfort of losing someone in your life. Like, the comfort of that is that they looking down on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's tough. That's tough if that's comfort. Like, all right, let's, let's be sympathetic, right? Like, in seriousness... If that is what that's what got me through, right? For the last so many years, mm -hmm. I haven't dealt with everything about this, but one thing that's been getting me through is I know that they looking down on me. And let's just say, for whatever reason, you actually felt it. Like you had some type of experience where it's like, I know that was my grandma. You know what I'm saying? Like I know, like I, it ain't like, you know what I'm saying? I know like this situation, like I just know. Like you, if you really believe that in your heart. Then you had this black, nappy-headed, young Hebrew <laughs> come up to you, and you've been in church all your darn life, yeah. and he come up to you, his black butt, can't even pronounce the darn words right, <laughs> telling you, you know what? No, nah, everybody sleep. Like, if you don't get your boy, they ain't trying to hear that. So it's a lot, it's a lot to unpack. Like, it's a lot for people to back out. Like, okay, hold on, hold on. If that's not true, then that's not true. Grandma really ain't looking. I'm sad again. That's a lot. And people don't want to deal with that. Right? You got to take your time. You know what I'm saying? You got to take your time. But at the end of the day, that ain't right. <laughs> that ain't true. Like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I get it. You know what I'm saying? I can help you through it. We can figure out a different way to cope. Right. But that ain't true. Right? Ain't no other way around it. That thing's the truth. Let's see what we got. Where are we up? Uh, that's it, brother. All right, it's ju uh, this is Judges chapter 21. Let's try to finish this thing out. The Judges chapter 21. Who is that? The Judges chapter 21. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpah, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter to, unto Benjamin the wife. Right? Because of what Benjamin just did. So we said, you know what? We not giving them no wife. That was part of the punishment. First we killed all they folk. And then, remember, this is our brother. This is our people. Right? This is our, this is our, same, our same race. So we said, look, we, we go ahead and shut them down. And we not giving y'all no wives. That was part of the punishment. Because they didn't want to give up who did the wrong. Alright? So, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's fast forward. Jump on down. What's the last verse? Give me, uh, give me a give me a nineteen. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh yearly in a place 
which is on the north side of Bethel. Mm -hmm. On the east side of the highway that goes up from Bethel to Shechem, and on the south of Lebanon, I'm sorry, on the south of Lebona, therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie and wait in the vineyards. Uh huh. So this is how they're going to get their wives, right? They had to go up on at what point? Uh, during the feast. During the feast. They had to go up during the feast, right? So then you go up during the feast, you go to the vineyard, what else? And see and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh uh -huh. and go to the land of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Like speed dating site. And it shall be <laughs> when their fathers of their brothers come unto us to complain. Appreciate Christian mingle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that we will say unto them, be favorable unto them for our sakes. Uh -huh. Because we reserve not to each man his wife in the war. For ye did not give unto them at this time that you should be guilty. All right? So now they looking at it it's like, listen, this is what, you know what I'm saying, the, the women of Shiloh, they be out there, they be dancing, you know what I'm saying? When they catch, when you catch them dancing, you just take them one, take her on down to Benjamin now. You know what I'm saying? Just get it real quick. Listen, listen. The, be, the men of Shiloh, they gonna start tripping. <laughs> we gonna holler at them like, ah, take it easy, you know what I'm saying? Here, take care of her, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Try to make it out. So they try to make a backroom deal. It was like, we swore that we wouldn't give our daughters to them. Yeah, they couldn't give so, it. Because like, most of the people in Israel, we we made a promise. Like, we were like, no, we not giving our daughters to, to Benjamin. So we was righteous enough to say, I'm not going to go back on my promise. But look how they saw the problem now. Look, we got another way. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's the mind of our people. You have to understand, that's the mind of our people. Like, that's what we have to guard ourselves from. Our people always looking like, well, you know what I'm saying? Let me stay righteous here. But if I can go around it and do it this way, maybe. And that's what always catches us up. Pharisees, same thing, right? Everything, every point in history, our people is always some. We always looking for this loophole. You know what I'm saying? We're always looking for something like, oh no, 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 I ain't gonna do that. But this over here, though. You know what I mean? All right, let's keep going. Let's see what else we got. And the children of Benjamin did so and took them wives according to their number of them that dance whom they caught. And they went and returned unto their inheritance and repaired the cities and dwelt in them. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel departed from there at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family. Uh -huh. And they went out from there, every man to his inheritance. Mm -hmm. In those days, there in those days, there was no king in Israel. There was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So he stamped the end of the chapter and just let us know, listen, that thing wasn't right. Everybody just did what they wanted to do. That ain't how you supposed to darn get no darn wife in Yisrael. You still a man's daughter. That ain't how we do it. <laughs> books say, books say what happened you take a man's daughter. What you got to do? You got to pay the pops. Got to pay the pops a darn dowry. What's wrong with you? You don't catch the woman dancing and just take her and start running. That's crazy. That's crazy. And then we talking, then the rest of Yisrael talking to the, no, 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 no. take it easy, take it easy. Care of her though, you know what I'm saying? We couldn't give her, you know what I'm saying? We couldn't give her none of ours. What type of hypocrisy? Y'all wouldn't give her y'all, so y'all take ours. That's crazy. That day would have started a whole another war for me. I'm like, oh yeah, all right, let's do it. All Israel together, let's do it. That day would start another war for me. I would let they darn butts up. Somebody would have had to die. <laughs> that day ain't crazy, but it stamped off and let you know. What I like about judges, judges doesn't make a whole lot of judgment, right? Judges don't tell you. This was wrong and this was right. This was wrong and this was right. Judges just give it to you flat. This is what happened. You got to know the book. You got to be able to look at the book and be like, some people read judges and be like, see, that's okay because this person did that. Like, no, judges are not. Judges wasn't written to tell you how, what the right way to do it. Right? And a lot of our books didn't tell you, okay, this was, somebody did this and this was wrong. God, God was mad at them because of that. Judges don't really do a whole lot of that. Judges tell you, oh, this is what happened. You got to know the book. You got to be able to know the book and be like, oh, that was against the law. Then the whole thing makes sense why the Most High God reacted. Like as we get into the book of Ruth, right? And as we get into the book of Samuel, some of the things that's happening make sense. Yeah, now it makes sense. Yeah, it, it, it starts to make sense because we just spent about 400 years acting up. Mm. What about 400? About 400. About 400 years. We spent about 400 years just acting up, acting a darn mess. So then... <laughs> When we get to Samuel and people in the rut, one of the first things they ask for is what? Make us a king. And what do we end off judges with? There was no king. There ain't no king. It feels like that might be the solution. Everybody doing what they want to do. You know, we need a king. 
All the other nations got one. We'll read. We don't want to get too ahead. You know what I'm saying? We still got to get through all the rules. We'll read, read through the rules next week. But it's important, the history. The reason why we go through Judges, it, it ties this stuff together. You start looking at it like, oh, God ain't overreacting. Right? These Christians, now you think, oh, no, the Old Testament. They, you, know, you know, they got two gods. The Old Testament God. Oh, no, you don't want to mess with him. <laughs> they be praising. Look, they be praising their New Testament God that they ain't got to deal with the Old Testament God. Oh, I'm so happy I wasn't in the law days. Oh, goodness, we would all be dead. Darn right, you darn sinner. <laughs> Not all of us. You know what I'm saying? Your butt would have died and the rest of us would have straightened up. No, no, I ain't going through that. You know what I'm talking about? Your butt would have been darn dead. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What you darn want. The reason why y'all acting up is the most I got hiding his face from you. Yeah. What's going to happen when he stop hiding his face? <laughs> Boom. He's just going to look at you? Don't you know how to, when the most high God is close to you, boy, he's slapping your butt darn down. Get it together. It's when he hiding his face. No, no, y'all do what y'all want to do. And you know, we start getting emboldened in that stuff. He's like, well, I see him one time. Well, you know, I don't think God tripping. He ain't really looking. You start thinking God ain't looking, man, that thing gets you. That thing done. Right? And you start. So what's worse, right? Like burning forever or just dying? Like burning forever after you die or just dying? Like what's worse? Burn forever. Burn forever. So that's the New Testament. There wasn't no burn forever in the Old Testament. That wasn't. You never seen nothing in the law be. like if 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 you uh you know what I'm saying if you steal from your brother you know what I'm saying the book the law gonna tell you chop his hand off you know what I'm saying the law gonna tell you he gotta restore it yeah. fourfold you know what I'm saying right. you steal five dollars give him twenty back right and we good that law <laughs> guess what New Testament tell your butt <laughs> you still you die in it your butt. Mm -hmm. Done and you burn it forever. That thing, but these Christians, get what the Christian gonna say? Oh, I love the New Testament God. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, you think you're getting a better deal, huh? That's great. Okay, not you a sinner. You you getting a better deal if you now if you a righteous man, right? You gonna do what y'all should say? That thing work out for you. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. That's an easy deal. You were a sinner forever, and then the last portion of your life you straightened it up. That's a definitely. <laughs> I think that's a sweet deal. That's, that's, yeah, that's a sweet deal. But you know what I'm saying? But if you a, if you if you die as a sinner, but you're not getting a better deal. You know what I'm saying? You better you better run back to the law. Like, listen, just stone me. You know what I'm saying? Let me fall into the pit. We good. But nah, your butt getting rolled. He gonna raise your butt up. You know what I'm saying? I, I always like to imagine that thing. I just like that mad. You know, like people a, be getting cremated. Like the Avengers when your vision died. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? You brought him back. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? You should have aimed for the head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bring your back. They crush your door. Get out. You know what I'm saying? Let them, let them all have it. That's how I like to imagine that thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people get, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to spread my mother over the ocean. You know what I'm saying? Can you imagine, like, moms being put... All the way back together. Pops being put all the way back together. Your sister, your 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 kids, whatever. Everybody get put all the way back together. From darn little bits in the ocean. I gotta bring all them things. Oh, let's get it real quick. Grab uh grab Revelation chapter 20. Cause I don't want nobody to think I'm making it up. The man said it. This is Revelation chapter 20. This is Revelation chapter 20. You know what else I want? Ezekiel. Yep. What is it? 46? 44? Oh, you're not talking about the 36? Valley of the Dry Bone? Yeah. 40-something. I thought it was 36. I don't think it's in the 40. Alright, so 40. Wait, wait, wait. No, you might be right. I think it's 37. It's 37. Or 37. Because the 40s is the temple. So, yeah, it's like in the 30s. Go. Go. You got your phone? Go. Yeah. Type into Google. Just say uh, Ezekiel Dry Bones. And then tell me what, what chapter. It should say Ezekiel chapter 30 something or 40 something or something. Do what? Ezekiel dry bones. You know what I'm saying? I can't think of it. I want to say I think 36. But I don't wanna, no, don't look for it, bro. Let him do it. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? That way we can, we can keep it moving. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. This is Revelation chapter 20. You know what I'm saying? Give me Revelation chapter 20. Give me verse, what, 9 I want? Mm -hmm. Chapter 37. 37 is what it say? Uh, what is it? Say? No, no, no. You ain't got to tell me written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right. That's it. I missed it. Go back. I must have missed it. I'm trying to get that camera. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. No, nah, go back. Uh, 
and the sea gave up the dead, which were. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what we looked at. So go go back one verse before that. What verse? And I saw the dead. Hold on, what verse is it? We on uh, we on twelve now. Okay, so this is verse twelve. All right, <laughs> watch what the book says. I saw the dead, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Uh huh. And the books were open. Uh huh. And another book was open. Uh huh. Which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Uh huh. And the sea gave up the dead which were. And in the it. sea did what? Gave up the dead which were in it. So you see all these people they sprinkling the ashes over the water and all that stuff. Like when I read this thing, I was like, dang. Like the Most High God getting every single piece. All right. This is Ezekiel chapter 37, verse, verse 1. 37, right? Yeah. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. What did I say? What, 36? Yeah, you said that. Cool. Yeah. I ain't read this thing forever. This is another one. I saw this. I was like, nah, this is crazy. 37, 1 through 14? Yeah, this is uh, chapter 37, verse 1. And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, mm -hmm. which was full of bones. Okay. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Okay. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? All right. So he asked him. Most of God said, these bones, they're very dry. You know what I'm saying? Like, can these bones live? Let's hear about it. And I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Somebody somebody who, uh, who got a phone, look up the word sinews for me. Sinews. It's pronounced sinews. Or sinews. <laughs> he a Gentile, you know. <laughs> I speak Hebrew. Well, you can. <laughs> sinews. It's like, uh, like muscles. Like everything under your skin, things that piece together huh? your bones. No, I'll say that's interesting. You looked it up? No, no, I was reading more. It's uh -huh. like what piece together your bones or something. Like what is it called? Now? Sinews. How you spell it? S i n e w s. You got that? S i n e w s. Yeah. All right, keep reading. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and mm. cover you with skin. All right. So what is that? <laughs> A piece of tough, uh, fibrous tissue uniting muscle to bone, bone to bone. So it started off as bone. <laughs> it started off as bone. No, that's what it said. Break the I didn't read it. That's what it said. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. You can just yeah. Right. You know, I guess some other precepts. There you go. <laughs> no, you get me what I'm saying. They got to be precise. You know what I'm saying? You look at it, and it's like, start off with just bones. Man said, no, 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 no. We gotta put this thing. He didn't halfway put that thing back together. <laughs> he said, let's put this thing all the way back together. Can you imagine that? That's crazy. All right, keep going. Let's hear about it. And we'll put sinews upon you, and we'll bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I prophesied there was a noise. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Mm -hmm. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together. Bone to this bone. And when I beheld, and clink, clink, low, clink, 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 the clink. sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said unto me, then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say unto the wind, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Mm -hmm. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Mm -hmm. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. Mm -hmm. We are cut off from our parts. Mm -hmm. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. And you shall know that I am Yahuwah when I have opened up your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. If they got that. So at the end, that happened for the living too, right? But at the end, the book say. I saw the dead, small and great, standing before me. Everybody gonna get resurrected. Right? That's why it calls it the second what? Second death. Right? One, you have the resurrection. Right? And then you have the second death. Right? So there's gonna be the first group that gets resurrected onto life. Then the next group, they get resurrected. Same thing. They're gonna get brought back. 
but they but gotta die again after they get resurrected. Then they get tossed into the lake of fire. That thing heavy. He's gonna literally make your body able to withstand burning. Oh, he's gonna give you a nice little body. I mean, your thing gonna be good. It's like if you had that body to begin with, you probably would have been like, oh, nah, I straighten up. Yeah, you know I mean, he, the most high, the body he gonna give you to burn forever. Yo, but if you had that to begin with, you know, that's all right. Y'all do what God say. Like now, we you might have obeyed. You know what I'm saying? You might have obeyed him. He's like, oh, thanks for this. You know what I'm saying? You might have appreciated life. But since you didn't appreciate what he gave you at first, oh, you wasn't you went faithful for a little. <laughs> now I got something for you, but. Right? Oh, you burn forever. Just like if you burn, if you burn in the house now, you'll die, your skin turn to ash and all that stuff. But it's people that burn that way. You know what I'm saying? Turn to ash. Every darn ash gonna get turned into bone, flesh. That thing gonna get wrapped back tight. So like thrown in a lake of fire to burn forever. I you just gonna sit there. Yeah, like your body's not gonna deteriorate. That's, that's crazy. Well, like what if it does, and then it gets put back together in the fire? Yeah, that's nice. And then goes again. Yeah, maybe who knows? Right? I don't know, but it's like if you make a body to burn, last burning forever. That's something. You know, so the next time you see a Christian, just ask him to tell you about it. No, nah, don't be doing that to no Christian. You don't know. They may not be go to hell. Leave them alone. All right. Any questions? All right, let's get out of here then. That's something to think about, right? <laughs> yeah, so why you out there messing around thinking life's a joke, young man? You got to talk to Randy Wiley here about serious stuff because you ain't going to see him again. Randy, what? what time is it? You know, I got to get ready for my What's going on? You need anything? <laughs>